Hello everybody, it's Kira with Polymer Clay TV and today I am going to show you how to make all kinds of beads to go on an interchangeable bracelet blank. So this one is a butterfly with a flower that I created and I'm just going to show you how to do these real quick. And of course, the supplies and tools you can find at our shop, createalong.com. So why don't you get ready to create along with me? Don't forget, Polymer Clay Adventure pre-launches in a couple of weeks. So you'll want to be on our newsletter list to find out all about that. That's 24 classes with a whole bunch of teachers, all kinds of fun stuff. So. Be sure that you're on our newsletter and why don't you go ahead and hit subscribe right now so that you get our videos every week. Let's get started with the project. Today we are exploring these instant gratification type um, bracelets. So you can get the this type, which is basically it's a, it's a bracelet blank and it has lobster claws on both sides. and it's meant to hold these sort of affirmation beads that you can also buy and they have the little uh, jump rings on the ends so that you can easily connect them on both sides and basically you buy this you buy that you make yourself a bracelet um, and it's interchangeable which is what I like about it but you know what forget about these these we can make them ourselves. So I'm gonna go through a few different beads that I made so that I could turn this really cool layered bracelet into an interchangeable bracelet that I can wear. And of course, one of my favorite wardrobe colors is gray because I tend to accessorize with bright pink and bright turquoise and the gray is a nice background. So when I saw this, I thought this is perfect for me because now I can make a whole bunch of beads to go in the middle. So let's go ahead and get started and make a few of these. So first things first, you're going to want to release the bracelet from the card, which I actually, <clears throat> the easy way to do it is to just get out your wire nippers and cut off those two wires and release it. So get rid of that. And now we've got, you can see the two lobster claws that are meant to attach on either side of the bead. And I'm going to save this as sort of a reference for how wide my bead might need to be but I'm also going to wrap this around my own wrist because if you're making it for yourself then you want it to fit you if you're making it for someone else then you may want to um, you know take their measurements or if you're making them to sell, then you may want to just stick with this because I'll tell you these big companies, this is like uh, market research. This is the size that they think that most people will be able to fit. And you can see that it does coincide with these other beads. It's about the same. So now I have a small wrist. So this thing wraps around me twice and is ready to close. But that's kind of tight, so we'll let it be looser. And for myself, I'm going to put the rings on for connecting this up a, a little bit closer than this because this will give me sort of a baggy bracelet and that's not what I want. So I'll keep this for reference, but try to make my holes a little bit closer than that. So they're gonna be a few different ways and the first one I wanna show you, we'll start with, Da, 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 da. our brand new magic molding mats. So these are now, a uh, few of them are in the shop and what this is, is a clear silicone. You can see it's got a shiny back and what that means for you is that you can mount this on an acrylic block to use it kind of like a rubber stamp. But these are very flexible. You can see through them. You can smush your clay in between them and they come in a set of the positive and the negative. So what does that mean? It means on this side, this is the negative. When you push your clay into it, your lines that create the design are gonna be popping out. 
And on this side, when you push your clay into it, the lines that create the design are going to be pressed in. And these are textured where a rubber stamp is not. There's texture all over this. So I'm just kind of kneading up a little piece of clay here so I can explain to you what's going on with these. So there is texture on these. There is no place on here that is flat and plain. Every single bit of it has its own fine texture to it. And you've seen Elisa and I sort of teasing and playing with these a little bit, but they haven't been ready. And now they are. So what we can do here is we can, I'm going to show you how the positive and the negative sides work together. So with this piece, we have the design pressed into the clay. And on this side, we have the design is popping out. So let me see if I can get nice and close. So here we have a raised design. And on the other side, the design is impressed. Two different looks with the same product. And I'm going to use these as the base for a couple of my beads for my bracelet making. So for my first one, I'm just going to start with a small little ball of clay and I'm going to roll it up. And I want to show you if you roll around the edge of your hand, you can get a sort of oval or football of clay. So I'm just rolling around the edge, whereas if you roll it right in the middle, you get a ball, a round ball. If you bring the clay out to the edges of your hand, you get more like a football shape. And I'm going to put my clay here and fold my mat over so that I get a couple different textures and smush the speed out like so. And I'm going to use this as a basis for one of my beads. So that's that. Here is some Sculpey Souffle in blue stone. And I've just conditioned a little piece of it. And I'm using my fingers. I'm going to actually smooth it out on the tile here. And I'm going to do some letter stamping. with my letters. And you've got to make sure that you pay attention and go like backwards with the letters. D. Dreamer. I liked that one that I bought that I had pre bought, but I want to do my own. And we're just going to cut this out with a clay blade around the word. And the reason I didn't do it on the bead is because sometimes when you're stamping letters, you mess up. And I didn't want it to be already stuck onto this nice base bead before I knew that I had spelled everything right and all that good stuff. So that's just a little tip for you. All right, next I'm gonna mess with the base bead a little bit. I'm gonna put the pins in that are going to attach it to my bracelet. And before I test, before I embed these eye pins, 
I screws really, I'm going to make sure that the lobster clasp on the bracelet can fit into that. Just test everything that you're doing before you make something permanent by baking it and then find out that it's not gonna work. And I like these little eye, eye screw things because they are threaded, which will help it stick into the clay. So over here, I'm going to just sort of shove that into the side. on each side of this before I finish it off with my word and maybe I'm the queen of rhinestones so probably put a little couple of rhinestones in there so just leave your pin hanging out the side there make sure that you squeeze on it a little so those threads get stuck in the clay and then I'm gonna go ahead and place my word and get a couple of other things to put on All there. All right, let's just go a little nuts here. So I've got antique silver pearlex. That's what's in here. And I am going to use my little bullet-tipped black silicone thingy here to create a little dotted pattern around my word. And what this does is it creates more visual interest and at the same time helps to press that piece down onto the clay below it so that everything sticks together and I'm not using my fingers and creating fingerprints to do it. Instead, I'm using a tool and creating a pattern. And I'm doing this prior to my Pearl X. Okay, there we go because now I can take this Perlex on my finger and rub it over the top and make all that texture and the words will all stand out really nicely. A little Perlex goes a long, 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 long way. So here we are so far with that metallic over the top of the word. And then I've got some Primo Accents in silver, which is a mica kind of a color. And I'm going to put three little balls of it around here with some vintage Swarovski crystals stuck into them. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three like so and then I'll just grab those crystals and I'll use the other end of my tool here to poke them in all the way so they get good and stuck in the clay and you want the clay to sort of come up around sorry I'm just poking that in there up around the uh, edges of your crystal so that it's going to stay embedded in the clay. So you can use your tool to kind of just make sure that it's going just slightly around your crystal so it won't come out later. And then I thought what I would do is give this a slight curve because it is going on my wrist. So I'm just going to bake it on my Sculpey Hollow Bead Maker and sort of drape it gently over the top of this large one so that it's just ever so slightly curved. Okay, and then the possibilities for this are endless. I'll show you a couple more that I made.
Okay, so I made a couple more and they're out of the oven. So here's my dreamer one. And then for this one, I used <clears throat> this henna cutter to get that shape and the mini diamond cutter to create the center piece there. I put a light texture on the back and some pearlex again. And then for this one, <clears throat> I used the butterfly plunger cutter and the plum flower to make the little flower in the middle. And then I also used something very exciting. These are glitter strips from an upcoming product line that we're, we have coming out. So um, basically this is glitter that required no glue and is never going to flake off. So that is very exciting, coming soon stuff. I put a Swarovski crystal in the middle there and of course my little eye um, screws on the ends. And now we can try this on. So all you'd have to do is attach your already pre-attached lobster claws and wrap around your wrist a couple of times. and then connect it up on the other side. And then for me, cause it's, I just have to loosen it and get it to be in the right spot. And there you go. So you can have infinite number of interchangeable, oops, <clears throat> beads to go in the middle of your bracelet there and have a really great time. There's so many different things that you can do that the possibilities of this are totally limitless. So I strongly recommend finding one of those instant gratification. I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but I know they have similar ones at Michael's and <clears throat> Joann's and every place that you can buy jewelry supplies. So the brand name of that one was instant gratification, but there are other brands as well. So have a lot of fun. Thanks so much for creating along with me. Remember to come over to polymerclaytribe.com. That's our Polymer Clay Facebook group and share what you made. See you next time.